What's up guys? This is the review of the 2011 Mazda CX-9 Touring. This is the first generation of the Mazda CX-9 and it was produced uh, in America, North America from 2007 until 2015. This car came available in three trim level models, the Sport, the Touring, which is the one that you see here in the top of the line, Grand Touring. In 2007, this car came equipped with Ford's 3.5 liter MZI engine, but for the following year, that engine was replaced with Ford's 3.7 liter MZI V6 engine, and that was the engine that all of the remaining first generation CX-9s came equipped with. The 3.7 liter MZI V6 engine produces 274 horsepower and 270 foot pound of torque. No, I'm sorry, 270 pound foot of torque. Um, there were two updates to this first generation Mazda CX-9. The first one came in 2010 and the the changes in that 2010 model were subtle. There was a little bit of a change in the front appearance of the car. Um, this this 2011 model you kind of see that smiley grin um, across the uh, the front of the car which was sort of a theme to carry through a lot of Mazda's vehicles during that time um, the, the the model prior to the update had more of a rectangular look but other than that there weren't too many um, changes uh, appearance wise but then in 2013 there was another update um, and with that update um, the appearance of the car changed quite a bit specifically um, this front end was replaced from being sort of a two-part front end with just one big uh, front end with uh, with a Mazda uh, emblem inside, so the, the smiley face um, uh, w is gone, and then the, the headlights also changed, and there was actually a line that connected the headlight to the the, the bigger uh, front grille that the 2013 models and up came equipped it, equipped with. And what was interesting is, you know, in 2012 is when the BMW F30 3 Series came out, and sort of the big design cue of that car was the fact that the taillights. Um, you know, merged with the grill. And uh, if you actually follow Mazda's designs, they often they will kind of mimic what uh, what BMW uh, is doing in some ways. And that 2013 uh, model had that um, exact sort of a similar feature where the taillights had a line that connected them um, to the grill. So this is a great looking car. I mean, I think that, um, you know, like I talked about before in one of my videos, when, you're, when, you get SUV, when you have SUVs, there's two ways you can go. You can have a boxy look. And then you can have sort of a you know a look like this that's a little bit more aerodynamic looking and it has softer lines so obviously this car exemplifies uh that that type of a design style but it's a great looking car i love this blue paint um, this is probably my favorite color on any vehicle but i will say that it, it is a little bit uh, more difficult to maintain than a silver car because uh you know dirt shows up uh, uh, much more easily on this one than it does on a silver car but it's a great looking car let me kind of show you the different angles that it has. Um, you know, if there's some cars age better than others, um, I think, you know, a lot of BMWs from the early 2000s have aged quite well, in my opinion. This car, although it's, it's, it's still good looking, I think that in some ways, um, it, you know, there's a couple of features look wise that, that, that look outdated at this point. I think these taillights um, look, uh, you know, like they've, uh, they're, out of, they're out of date. Um, and the front grille, um, again, not a, not a problem with the 2013 model and up, but uh, certainly that smiley face, which was a design uh, theme for many Mazda vehicles, is you know uh, no longer the design theme. So therefore, it does make the car look a little bit outdated, but still the car looks great. Um, it's a it's a big car, um, and I've got I love these 18-inch uh, rims that it comes equipped with. Okay, um, let's take a look at the inside of the car. All right, before we get inside, I wanna show you the trunk. Uh, the Mazda CX-9 comes equipped with uh, third row seats. So what I've done here is, you know, one of the seats is, is laid flat because we usually don't use the third row, but I wanted to show you uh, kind of what, what that looks like. And you have a little bit of room. I mean, I've, I've been in the back here before, and uh, though it's not the most comfortable place to be for somebody my size, six foot three, I have been able to, to, to fit in the back. So. 
you know, kids and smaller adults uh, would have no problem uh, sitting back here. Of course, when you when you do raise the seats, you don't have much um, trunk space left. Uh, but uh, if you're not using the third row seats, then all you do is you just kind of pull that, and uh, there you go. Now you got a pretty cavernous trunk, uh, which is great um, for a family. So let me close that. All right, in the back, uh, pretty spacious here in the back, as you all can see. Obviously, this is our family vehicle, so we got the, the kid seats in here, and uh, you know, a smaller adult could actually still fit in that middle row as well. But um, plenty of room here, and you can actually slide these seats forward and back um, to give the passengers in the third row a little, little more room. But uh, sort of what it looks like, and you got climate control in the back. All right. All right, let's get to the front. So here we are. Let me show you what the car looks like before I start talking. Yeah, that's the arm that I'm gonna use when I do the driving part of the review. And then here is, here are the captain's chairs. I actually love these uh, seats. They're super comfortable um, and uh, you know, very, very easy to, to be in on a, on a long drive. All right, let's go inside. Got some storage room in the back as you normally would. So let me close that. All right, so here's the inside of the car. And uh, it's pretty nice, you know. Um, this, in contrast to like the current generation, like Mazda 6 and the Mazda CX-9, where you can't really tell a difference between a premium vehicle and one of those mid-level vehicles that is the Mazda. Uh, in this particular generation, although the interior is nice and is an improvement, you know, over the previous generation Mazdas uh, that, that, that came before it, it still doesn't have that, you know, premium feel inside. Um, that that you would find in a BMW or a Mercedes, and what I mean by that is, you know, the leather is nice. You got the leather here. The, the the chairs are comfortable. The chairs are also, you know, you got powered seats. But then there's a lot of plastic, like hard plastic, that sort of dominates this entire dashboard. I mean, this is hard plastic here, everywhere. Just hard plastic, and it just kind of goes from, you know, you got the soft touch materials here, and then you got the 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 the, the hard plastic that pretty much goes to the top of the hood and even here uh, you 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 see that um, hard plastic I mean, there's not they're not really soft touch materials so although the car is nice in here everything's laid out really well you know you got your dual climate control you've got your um, radio knobs right here um it's just it doesn't it doesn't really have the feel of 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 a, of a, of a premium vehicle which of course one wouldn't expect that either because that this wasn't necessarily a premium vehicle. It was sort of a mid-level vehicle and, it, and it's got that feel. But, um, you know, just worth worth pointing out. I think if you were to look at the current generation uh, CX-9, you'd be hard-pressed to tell a difference between it and a BMW and a Mercedes. That's how much Mazda has stepped up its uh, its, its its interior game. But it's a, uh, you know, pretty pretty nice interior to be in. Um, what's, what's really nice about it is... You can really find a perfect seating position uh, in this car. Obviously, you can move, you know, back and forward, and then the, this telescoping wheel can, really can pull out a lot. So you kind of go like this up, push it back, push it forward, and um, that's that's just really nice to have, you know, especially if you're a taller person. Like I, it's, sometimes for me, it's hard to find the comfortable seating positions in, in many cars, but in this car, it's not a it's not a problem at all. You've got good storage here. Obviously, the glove box compartment, you've got the, the, the cup holders here, but you can close this top latch so it look, has a cleaner look. Obviously, there's some storage in here as well. But yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice um, interior uh, of, of the car. With this six-speed automatic transmission, it does a pretty good job um, of, um, you know, kind of shifting through the gears as you're puttering around town. Um, what's nice about it, though, is you still have the manual option. And I kind of like how notchy this is. At least it kind of gives you a feel like you're, you know, driving a stick shift, even though you're not. But if you go in the manual mode right here, this would be to downshift and upshift, and that actually, you know, can can be pretty useful, especially if you're going up a, a you know, a, up a st steep hill and you need to you need the car to react faster than it would if you just left it automatic. So it does have that manual mode, and if you're in manual mode, 
what it what it does here is it tells you that you're in manual mode and then this is how you you know like when you're shifting through the gears it um uh, it, it shows up right there so pretty light you know big big fan of this kind of almost reminds me of you know those gated shifters that the ferraris have of course it's not a, anywhere close to a ferrari but um and then here to the, here the dials uh looks pretty nice actually you know very symmetrical you got the two big gauges on the left and the right you got the rpms on your left you got the uh the speedometer on your right and you got the engine temperature display on your right and uh, and also a fuel gauge on the left so pretty nice um nice layout easy to read um you also have some um you know information here that tells you you know how the uh, like the, the heat the time um etc uh but all in all, uh, pretty happy um, with this car. Uh, the steering wheel is actually also pretty nice for a car this size. It's actually a pretty small um, steering wheel. It's got a pretty small diameter. And um, that makes it actually a little bit easier to move this car because it is a bigger car, 4,500 pounds, you know, three row seat, third row seats. But but the, the smaller uh, steering wheel actually makes it a little bit um, easier to drive this car around. Um, another nice thing about uh, the steering wheel controls is that you have, um, you know, uh, uh, various buttons here, you know, for Bluetooth, um, volume adjustment, things of that nature. So that's, um, you know, that's it for the interior uh, review of the car. And now let's take this uh, car on the road and I can give you um, my impression um, of its uh, driving characteristics. Yeah, I meant to show you this. This is, you can put some sunglasses there as well, which is pretty nice. All right.